When Ern said you sound tired, man, I said he's a lot more than tired. Hey loves, it's A Back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. Today we're discussing Atlanta season four, episode nine, Another Wife. Alfred's world. Hope I said that word right. I've seen it before, and then when I saw the scene, it matched up for me. But we'll get to that when we get to it. The episode opens up with Alfred in the woods, and I'm like, okay, amazing. We're gonna get a woods part three. You know how much I love woods, new jazz, and now this episode. When you get a one off with Alfred, you know it's gonna be gold. So he's shooting, and he seems very specific with it. When he goes up to the poster, I instantly get a flashback of when Darius brought that dog poster in the gun range and everyone was flipping out on him. At least we have a regular Schmegler poster this time. And then we see off in the distance, his phone is there and he's getting all of these notifications and a call from Ern. I'm thinking, how long has he been out here? Is he avoiding something? What's the deal? Atlanta shows us a lot without saying much and we kind of just leave it up to our own interpretation. When he starts really blowing up that poster after he sees the missed call, I said, did something happen? Did something happen between him and Ern? It's really giving aggressive. And you know, I've said it before, Atlanta pairs their scores so well with the scenes. So if you listen to the lyrics of the music and the tempo, it's really giving Aggie. So I was really worried for Alfred's mental state, especially since it's something I thought we would get more insight in this episode to wrap up the season and series beautifully. Kind of did, but not in the way I expected, and I loved it. This episode would have been boring if I wasn't looking at every single scene for symbolism because it was so regular until it wasn't and then it became a little bit too dramatic for me. It was very dramatic, very traumatic. One thing I'm going to say before we get into the plot more, they really played us with the tagline because Alfred is really always going through something. I don't know why they make this one character always go through something that's going to give him PTSD, but this, out of everything we've seen with Alfred so far, this took the cake in a different kind of way. Alfred decides to go to the general store and he's talking to Clyde, who I'm gonna assume is the owner, but he's working the cash. And he asks for a couple things. And at first I'm like, this guy has so much attitude. And then I realized he's just a small town person. He takes his time flipping through the pages and I'm, I'm confused. Why don't you have a database? It's 2022 or 2019 at the time of making this episode. You don't have a digital database of what you have in stock, sir. He's like slowly taking his time to fold over the pages to tell him we not have that. And the way he said that, I was like, okay, sir. He asked Alfred, oh, are you going to order the frying pan on Amazon? Alfred looks up at the confronted flag and the sign that says we don't call the cops. And I said, you're not in safe territory, sir. Your safe farm may be down the street, but you need to stay there because this is not your part. This is not your neck of the woods. I grew to love Clyde as the episode went on because he's just himself. When Alfred's like, no, I was like, that is the most bait no ever. Obviously you're ordering while you're in front of him and he's not having it. Lana writes like a novel. I was reading all of these moments as foreshadowing. I knew that cast iron would have importance. I also knew Clyde would give him information that would be equally as important as a cast iron. I just didn't know how it would tie in. I just didn't know how they would wrap it up together, but they did it so beautifully. Alfred's at home and he's cooking and it's a labor of love. He's listening to music and he's feeling it. And it's like, we never get to see him just relaxed and calm and enjoying himself. So it was so good to see. Then he hears a ruffling, he goes out and he steps in Kaka as he's looking to see that something is rummaging his beloved plants. I've noticed that this season they've had a lot of plants as far as him being a person who is nurturing the plants after running away from that guy who had smoke for him from back in the day in the Crank That Killer episode. And he also took a plant from Blue Blood's funeral. So there's a lot of symbolism there with plants and growth and nurturing. And the way I see it is, it's his form of meditation. He may have roasted Urn earlier on in the season about going to therapy, but he doesn't even take in that for him, this is his therapy. You can tell that he's at calm and at ease and he really taps in when he's taking care of his plants. His lines about, you better not be in there with your furry friends got me. But then I also thought, wait, is there like actually something at the safe farm that's gonna make it unsafe? I don't wanna find out so early in the episode. So I'm glad that they kind of led up to it and it wasn't what I thought, which was someone actually followed him out. 
for you. I'm so glad I was wrong with that theory. The next day he goes right back to the general store and Clyde is trying to ask him, did it crumble in your hand? Was it wet? He's like, I'm not touching Gaka. Like, no, no dookies, no shits. I love the way he said it and his facial expressions at every moment were priceless. Alfred says so much without saying too much. That's why I love Brian Tyree Henry. He captures so many emotions in his expressions. It's just perfection. I love when he starts laughing hilariously when Clyde says that it's a boar and he's like, oh, it's a hog. And he's like, you know, you, a woman got killed last year by a hog. And of course, if you get your Googles on, Atlanta likes to throw in that strange truth you never know fact or fiction like ap last week's episode. They always have you guessing. These kind of wild boar type of animals are hella aggressive. So this could have really happened in real life. That's the crazy part. When Clyde was telling him how to handle it, it didn't sound like he was talking about a feral hog. It sounded like he was talking about something else. If you get my drift on what I'm saying, put it down below because it sounded like, especially paired with the poster above, he was talking about a different kind of pig, but that's just my interpretation. What also got me was how much Al was laughing. And I'm like, sir, you see, this is foreshadowing again, watch you laughing. And then he wanted to poison them. And I knew that wasn't gonna be enough. And Clyde said the same thing. He's like, nah, you gotta hit them in their nose. And everything he said was giving me omniscient, this is gonna happen to you, so don't play around with it type of energy. And of course, as we get later on the episode, we see how that goes. Earlier in the episode, Al sees a tractor and it's kind of covered over and it becomes his project. He decides to play a YouTube video of that John Deere guy who has like 2 million subscribers just talking about tractors all day. A couple years back, I was invited to the Google headquarters here in the six and they showed a video of this tractor guy and I didn't get it, I don't know why. He blew up so much because most people that watch when they went through the analytics aren't farmers. So who are all these people watching this? At least Alfred has a real reason for watching this guy. But I laughed when I saw him because I'm like, I think that's the same guy. And I loved when he said, you know, be careful because he's roll back. Alfred stops what he's doing, jumps out. As soon as he has a sigh of relief because it didn't happen, it happened. It's almost as every moment in the first half of this episode is hinting almost in a supernatural kind of way for all of the horrors that happen in the second half of the episode. When he goes into the house and the lights start flickering, that was too trippy for me when I watched this last night. I was thinking like, oh my gosh, either his ancestors are warning him that something's gonna happen, or he needs to stay in his house for the rest of this episode because something's gonna go down when he leaves. Anytime I see light flickerings, I say, oh hell no, where's the holy water? So when he tapped it a little bit, I'm like, take this in as symbolism. I felt like almost every moment had a different symbol and there was a way that you could define it for yourself and interpret it as you want. So when I saw that, I'm like, it's about to go down. Then he falls asleep watching some weird documentary about chicks. Hears all this ruffling, gets his gun. That guy always has his gun right there. Runs outside and the hog ate all of the poisoned weed and got away unscathed. I said, wow, we're really dealing with a different type of boar. This is not your regular Pumbaa. I believe it was the next morning, he's working on the tractor and he's trying to get it to go and it won't work and he's so frustrated. Then he checks the exhaust and there's a rat. I hesitated for a second. I was like, there's no way he's gonna pull this rat out with his bare hand. And he's not gonna touch it. There's no way. The way he tripped on his trip in Amsterdam when he saw the rat on the sidewalk, He's not touching the rat right in front of him. There's no way. So when he pulled it out, I said, you know what? I gotta give Alfred an A++ for growth. Look how much this character has faced fear, faced so many adversities and is still resilient with it. And he keeps surprising me with every scene. I loved how much joy he had driving that tractor. I love the cinematography of the shots panning him. It was almost like he was a little child. And then I realized how often have we seen Paperboy laugh and just live fully and joyfully. It was so nice to see. And even though it was saddening for me because it was in his solitary, I feel like in that moment he found his peace and that was what this episode was about. He's out here trying to find himself and figure out where he is. Watching this, it seems like he's never actually taking a step to finding his peace and joy until this episode. It seemed like he was really seeking it out, even if it was in his solitary and that was beautiful to me. The tractor fell on him 
I said, this is the end of Alfred. Why they got to do this to us? I was so grateful when the screen came back from being black. He was alive, but you know me, I can't see well. So I wasn't sure how mangled his foot was when he got it out and the sounds he's made. Incredible acting, but very devastating. I was traumatized watching this and I kept thinking, Paperboy already has so much PTSD. Why I got to put him through this? He's trying to crawl over this vast vast feel to get back to his home and what really got me about it was this is the same scene from a very dreamy i wouldn't say renaissance i don't know how to describe this type of art but there's a painting out there of a woman crawling because she doesn't want to use a wheelchair she'd rather be independent the hard way and some people say me as a blind person without a dog or a cane has the same energy but a dog or okay won't help me. Oh my gosh, the things humans do. She's very resilient crawling on her field and it's the exact same pose that Alfred is doing. Even though it's not his choice because he didn't want to break his leg, he's still choosing to be there and trying to be resilient, getting back to the house as the sun is setting. And I keep thinking about the boar. That boar is gonna come back for more weed and find him instead. And what really got me, I was laughing, but I was mad at the same time. Homegirl's dropping off the Amazon package with Taylor Swift in the AirPod. So she didn't hear him screaming. And I'm like, this is gonna be the end of Paperboy. And for what? That package and that drop off could have saved his life. He makes it back to the house, right to the steps, sigh of a relief. And as soon as he does that, I'm like, uh oh, we already know where this is gonna go. He opens a package, throws the cast iron. I'm thinking, don't throw it too far. You're gonna need it. I already know how this is gonna go. And what happens? You hear the snarl of the feral hog. This thing is ugly. I was hoping it'd be a little cute, like I said, looking like a Pumba, but no, that thing was demonic. And the way it charged him, I thought that it charged his peen and I'm like, oh my God, even if Paperboy makes it, he's gonna be a eunuch. I don't know why I thought of that, but the sound he was making and then how he took him to the ground so easily. That for me really signified facing your demons head on. Here is Al who's avoiding calls, who's avoided a lot of things in his life, who's just had so much trauma and so many triggers that he's never really dealt with head on. And now you have this feral hog that's making his life flash before his eyes. It's such an imminent danger. When you finally grab that cast iron and you keep hearing him bang and curse at the same time, I felt like he was releasing years, years of ish and I was here for it. What I wasn't here for was the next scene when he's frying up bacon and drinking whiskey and I'm like, don't tell me that you're a real, real, <laughs> you're a real country guy now and you're just eating what you killed. But then we see him throw the box away. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what happened to that hog, but he was eating his cousin. That's a little bit too country for me. I don't know if Alfred's there yet. That scene was actually very scary. And what also got me to go back to it just for a second is when he actually picked up this time, I was like, wait, you weren't picking up before. Is it because you had a near death experience? And Ern is just talking about signing the papers and you sound really tired, man. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm okay. Why do they do this? Whenever they go through trauma, they just play it off. Is this an ode to what black people go through in society, how it's so regular degular that they don't speak on it for what it is? Or is it because they've endured so much trauma that something like this is so ordinary, it's not even worth mentioning. This is not the first time it's happened in this season. When they got into Paperboy's house after Darius and Ern kissed and Paperboy ran for his life, they both acted like they had a regular day. I'm sitting there like, these are the things you guys should be talking about. Like if I went through the days you guys went through, all I would do with my friends is talk about how trippy it is, but you guys just brush it off. It's like almost on the surface, but it's unspoken. So when Ern said, you sound tired, man, I said, he's a lot more than tired. Like, how do you not know? And how does Al not share that part with his cousin? I just don't get it. Really speaks to the state of their friendship, but more than that, how normal going through these traumatic situations have become to them that they don't even mention it. I love this last scene when he gets a FaceTime from Ern and he answers it again this time. And they're just going back and forth and Ern's like, you burnt yourself. I was like, black people don't burn, Europe sunburn. And they start going through dark people, they're roasting on Wellesley Snipes and all these other people. And I'm like, why? Why do you have to have smoke like this? But these are the moments that I love that take me back to season one, episode one. 
and how much they've grown and how close they've become, but how distant they still are. I loved when Ern said, you know, Atlanta will always be there and a safe farm is a safe farm. You ain't got to stay there. It reminded me of how lonely Al's been this entire series and how almost in this moment he's finding his peace. And the music that plays is so perfect for the mood as the montage fades out of them laughing and kikiing. And it's just an unspoken thing that they've been through situations, but they don't sit and rest in it. There's one more thing I want to say before I let you guys go. When he was crawling through the field, I felt like that dragged on forever. It was the sound effects. It was the facial expressions. It was the so close to being saved by the Amazon chick. But then I thought, I bet you if you watch it a third time, girl, you're going to realize that the amount of time that he was on the tractor living his best life and the amount of time that he was taking after getting crushed by the tractor was the same amount of time. And Lana gets really philosophical like that. I remember a Buddhist teaching that said nothing is neither good or bad. It's our thinking that makes us so. And there's another teaching that goes that we make things last longer that don't need to. So whether it's a happy moment, we're not supposed to hold on. If it's a sad moment, we're not supposed to hold on. So I would love to go back and check and see if it was about the same amount of air time that we see him enjoying himself versus in agony. I watched it and I felt like the time it took for him to make it back to the house and then the fight with the hog was an eternity and my heart was beating so fast. But the moments of joy, I was like, let's have more of this because Al deserves it. I wonder if it was the same amount of time because one felt like five minutes, the other felt like 50. I don't know if you felt the same about those scenes and anything else that I might have missed or anything that you picked up that you thought was significant. Tune in with me next week to wrap up the final episode of Atlanta. I really hope that I'm right. You know, last week I said that I want them to do an LA spinoff, but who knows? We won't know until we know. But all I do know is I've loved this series and especially this episode. There's so much there. You can go back and watch again. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and